Hello, my amazing children. This is Grandma Carla. I am back with Hudson Taylor and the subtitle, Hudson Taylor Deep in the Heart of China. And this is a book by Janet and Joff Binge. And we are on chapter two. Chapter one was very exciting about a very, very near destruction of the ship that he was traveling in. Chapter two, a mother's prayer. The boys at work were right, Hudson Taylor thought to himself as his father continued to read. I live the most boring life in the whole of Barnsley, probably in the whole of England. Why do I have to be stuck here listening to this morning after morning? He was listening to his father read from the Bible. It followed right on from the Bible reading the night before, but Hudson hadn't been listening then either. He glanced around at his two younger sisters, Amelia and Louisa. They were paying perfect attention. Their blonde ringlets of hair hung still, and there was a serious expression on both of their faces. His mother sat at the other side of the table, nodding her head slowly in agreement as Mr. Taylor read. How boring. Hudson's mind drifted back to when he had started working at the bank. How naive he'd been, thinking the other junior clerks would be impressed by the fact that in 1791 his grandfather had built the town's first Methodist chapel on Pinfold Hill, or that his family had attended the church every single Sunday since then. Instead of being impressed with his family's history, his Bible knowledge, and the fact that he could even read the Bible in Latin, his co-workers had laughed at his childish faith and began challenging everything he'd always presumed to be correct about his religion. Presumed, that was the right word. When he'd been told about Jesus and the Christian faith, he'd presumed the person was telling him the truth. But was he? What if there was no real truth? What if people just believed because other people told them to believe? And what about Christians being hypocrites? Hudson's co-workers were always throwing that one up. Were they right? Hudson could certainly think of a few people in the church who would easily fit the category. His head swirled with thoughts that had never even crossed his mind until he'd started working at the bank nine months earlier. His experiences were so narrow, his upbringing sheltered, and his life downright boring. By comparison, the lives of the young men he worked with seemed filled with promise of adventure. While they were making the most of life, he, a 16-year-old no less, was stuck at home, sitting at the table with his 12 and 8-year-old sisters, listening to their father drone on and on. Eventually, Mr. Taylor clapped the Bible shut and said a final prayer. Then he turned to Hudson. Come downstairs before you go to work today. I want to take a look at those eyes of yours. Hudson nodded reluctantly. His father didn't miss a thing. Hudson's eyes had been hurting a lot lately, especially when he tried to balance the ledgers at the bank. But he hadn't wanted to tell his father about the problem because deep down, he had a suspicion that his eye problem had something to do with the gas lamps at the bank. And since working at the bank was his escape from boredom, he didn't want sore eyes to come between him and his newfound freedom. Hudson descended the stairs from the family living room to the pharmacy below. The familiar smell of herbs and potions greeted him as he stepped into his father's world of bottles and pill boxes. Mr. Taylor beckoned for him to come and sit down on the stool in the back room. There, this was where he examined his customer's ailments. He lifted Hudson's eyelids and peered into one eye and then the other through a magnifying glass. He asked questions. How long had they been hurting? Was it worse in the light or at night, in the morning or at night? Finally, the diagnosis was made. Both of Hudson's eyes were badly inflamed, a serious problem that could make him blind. The only hope for a full recovery was total rest. Hudson sat stunned. He knew it had been too good to last. There would be no more working at the bank, no more laughing with the other junior clerks. Instead, he'd be stuck at home all day long being cared for by his mother and sisters.
It was so unfair. But what did he expect? It had been this way all his life. Every time something started to go right for him, he would get sick. And ever since his younger brother, William, and then his baby brother, Theodore, had died, his parents had become extra cautious. Life already seemed totally boring, but Hudson had a feeling it was going to get a whole lot worse in the weeks ahead. As he lay in his darkened bedroom, all thought of adventure drained from his mind. The water dripping from his wet rags pressed against his eyes, mingled with the tears of self-pity that ran across his cheeks. He could see his life stretched out before him, and it wasn't a happy sight. As the only son, he would one day own the pharmacy. One thing would be different, though. Hudson promised himself there would be no more Bible reading each morning when he was running things, and he wouldn't be praying with his children either. If nothing else, his time at the bank had shown him just how old-fashioned these religious ideas were. Hudson made a slow recovery, and when his eyes had sufficiently he healed, he began working with his father. He was glad to be up and about again, and he was glad that the pain was gone from his eyes. But now that he was better, he resented having to go to church again with the family. Mr. Taylor was used to being obeyed by his children, but he made sure Hudson joined and he made sure Hudson joined them each Sunday. But Mrs. Taylor could see the frustration building in her son. She worried about him, and she prayed for him every day. Two years passed, and while Hudson was settled into the routine of working with his father in the pharmacy, he couldn't shake the feelings of frustration. All the while, Mrs. Taylor kept praying for him. Sometimes actions carried out by different people in different places at different times can meet together at one moment and completely change the course of a life. Such a moment happened to Hudson Taylor on June 1849 two years after leaving the bank. The first action was taken by his sister, Amelia, who was now 14. She looked up to her older brother and had been worried for some time about how he had drifted away from God. She decided to do something about it. In her diary, she made a note that she would pray for Hudson three times a day until he found peace with God. And true to her word, she prayed for him faithfully. The second event happened a month later when Mrs. Taylor went to spend several weeks visiting her sister. While she was away, she actually had some spare time, something she never seemed to have at home, attending to the needs of her busy household. So she decided to spend an afternoon praying for Hudson. On that same afternoon back at home, Hudson was feeling particularly bored. He knew, though, that if he didn't look busy, his little sister Louisa would pester him to play paper dolls with her, or worse, his father would find some chore for him to do. So Hudson decided to take a good book in his favorite hideaway. But he couldn't seem to find anything that interested him on the bookshelf. He'd read all of the good books until he knew passages of many of them by heart. It was then that he spotted a religious booklet he had not seen before. His father was always collecting them and giving them to his customers. Hudson smiled to himself as he took the book off the shelf. He had figured out how these booklets worked a long time ago. The first half was always an exciting story to get people's interest, and then the second half was a gospel message. Hudson had heard enough gospel messages already in his lifetime, so he promised himself he would only read the first half. With the book tucked firmly under his arm and keeping an eye out in case Louisa discovered his hideaway, he hurried to the old warehouse at the back of their property and settled down to read. Forty-five miles away, at her sister's house, Hudson's mother was praying fervently for him. After several hours of praying, she felt a peace come over her. Somewhere deep inside, she knew God had answered her prayers. She didn't know how it happened, but she was certain that her son had become a Christian. And amazingly, he had. Hudson had begun reading the story in the booklet, and it had interested him so much that he'd forgotten all about his promise to read only the first half of the book. Before he knew it, he had read the gospel part as well. As he read, a phrase seemed to jump out at him. The finished work of Christ, the booklet said, and Hudson couldn't seem to get that phrase 
out of his mind. He thought about it at great length. If it was a finished work, then there was nothing he could do but accept that finished work. And so, there in his hideaway, in the old warehouse, Hudson Taylor invited Jesus Christ to come into his life. Hudson left the warehouse a new person. The struggle that had raged on inside him for so long was finally settled. For the first time since starting work at the bank nearly three years earlier, he felt at peace inside. He wanted his mother to be the first one to know, and since she was not yet back from visiting his sister, her sister, he said nothing to anyone else about what had happened. A few days went by, and Amelia and Louisa watched Hudson with fascination. Something about him was different. Finally, Amelia asked him what had happened, and Hudson confided in her that he had become a Christian. He explained that he had not told her sooner because he wanted their mother to be the first to know, and so he swore Amelia to secrecy. It was two weeks before Mrs. Taylor returned from visiting her sister. Hudson could hardly wait to see her face and tell her the good news. Finally, he heard her footsteps in the doorway. He flung open the door and wrapped his arms around his mother. When he had nearly squeezed the life from her, he let her go and announced that he had some wonderful news for her. Mrs. Taylor smiled broadly. I already know what you have to tell me, she said, nodding. You have made your peace with God, and I have been rejoicing in that knowledge for two weeks. Hudson stepped back, stunned. Only one person in the world knew of his conversion, and that was Amelia. Had she written to her mother? How did you know, he asked. Did Amelia break her promise? She said she wouldn't tell anyone. Mrs. Taylor laughed. No, I have not heard it from any earthly source. I was praying for you while I was away, and as I prayed, the Holy Spirit made it known to me that he had claimed you. Hudson was both relieved that his sister hadn't lied to him and shocked by how sure his mother had been of his conversion. As they continued their conversation, Hudson learned that his mother had been praying at the exact moment that he had come to understand the real meaning of being a Christian. Several days later, Hudson picked up what he thought was his notebook to check for something he had written. Just as he opened it, he realized he had picked up Amelia's notebook by mistake. But before he could close it, a passage with his name in it caught his eye. The passage was her diary entry, and in it she promised to pray for him three times a day until he had become a Christian. It was dated exactly one month before he picked up the book and read it in his hideaway. Hudson was amazed. God really did answer prayer. He found himself wondering what would happen next in his, this new world of faith he had entered. Okay, so in this book, the shipwreck chapter was later in his life, and now we're going back to earlier in his life in his conversion. And it does sound like it's going to be a very exciting life that we read about here, the life of Hudson Taylor. And this is Grandma Carla, and I love you.